hope you've got a drink handy because I think you're gonna take a sip every time I say the word cine lens. Um, yeah, this is gonna be a fun game. This is the time of your life, the moment to live, the moment to shine, the moment to rise and take over the world. I'm on top of everything, on top of my game. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on this Wex Masterclass in partnership with Sigma. My name's Russell Kent Nichols, and I'm a filmmaker based down in the southeast in Kent. Now, traditionally, for the last few years, I've been shooting on Sigma art series lenses that are designed for both photo and video. Absolutely love those lenses and the image that they give me. But I've always been curious about Sigma's cine range of, of lenses for professionals. Um, I've been lucky enough that, that Sigma have loaned me for the last month a set of their Cine Primes. So they lent me the, the 20, the 24, the 28 and the 35 to try those out on both a music video shoot as well as a fashion shoot. Um, just to see how well they work with my particular setup and just to, to discover the benefits really of, of cine lenses and I wanted to talk to you today about how they can help improve your filmmaking and also the differences between cine lenses and the traditional photo and video lenses that you may already currently be using. One thing I've learned is that cine lenses are generally purchased in sets. So you'll quite often see like a 24, 35, 50 and an 85 in one, one set. Um, this is so that all of the lenses in a specific cine range, especially for the prime lenses, they all have a consistent look and color across the focal lengths. So if you've been shooting videography projects in the past and you've, you've switched focal lengths, you switch lenses mid shoot and maybe they are from different brands, you'll probably notice a slight difference in color. So one of the benefits of shooting cine lenses is that they're gonna be consistent throughout. So all that's gonna change is the, the focal length. So you can keep a consistent color, which is really handy in post-production, especially if you're color grading. Whilst PL mount generally tends to be the most popular type of mount that's available for cine lenses, EF mount, the Canon, Canon mount is, um, is widely accepted with an adapter on most camera bodies. So that's gonna fit a Canon, a Lumix, a Sony, a Fuji. You can pretty much adapt an EF mount to, to any camera system. So earlier I said that my shooting rig is kind of unique in the sense that I shoot on a gimbal pretty much 100% of the day. Not really a fan of handheld shooting, never really been into that and I only really use a tripod. Um, when I'm shooting interview stuff like this. So one of the main benefits of switching to cine lenses from, from my own personal point of view is the fact that generally cine lenses across the, the range, especially with primes, they have very similar weights, size and shapes. And also the, the follow focus gears are the same distance from the mount all across the range. So if I want to quickly switch from a 35 to a 50, I can do that with very minimal balance changes to my gimbal setup. So I can, it means I can, I can change my lenses a lot quicker than I would do with photography lenses where the 50 might be really small and then the 35 might be really big. So if you're kind of run and gun shooting and you haven't got a lot of time to switch lenses between shots, then cine lenses, that's probably the, the number one benefit for me personally, to be able to have that quick change, not have to mess around with the follow focus, just tap to calibrate and away I go. Let's go behind the scenes on a couple of recent shoots that I shot with the Sigma Cine Primes. Firstly, a music video for an artist named Jack Howitt, who I know really well. I've shot a couple of his music videos in the past. Secondly, I wanna show you a behind the scenes of a fashion shoot that I shot in partnership with a dress designer called Jemmy Maloof. And I used these prime lenses on both of those shoots. I think the best way for me to show you the benefits and talk you through what I love about them is to actually show you them in action. So let's see some behind the scenes footage. Today I'm going to be shooting the video on the Panasonic S1H and S1. I'm going to be mounting that on a gimbal with a follow focus. So for me having the focus gears in the same place means I'm going to be able to switch my lenses really easily. I'm also using the lenses with the DJI 3D focus system. Now the 3D focus system, which I talk about quite a lot in some of my Instagram channels and also in the other Wex Masterclass that I did, um, that is basically automatically programming the, the follow focus on the gimbal. Um, having the, the same 
focus throw across all of the lenses means that I don't have to recalibrate the, the 3D focus system every time. So for me, it's gonna be a huge time saver. Now I'm just gonna balance the gimbal, okay? Wow, that is so good. I don't even need to rebalance it. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Okay, so now I'm just gonna turn the gimbal back on, calibrate the follow focus. And yeah, that was, <laughs> that was so easy to, to do that. Um, because I guess these must weigh the same weight and, and stuff, so didn't even have to rebalance the gimbal. So that saved me so much time. Not only can I use the follow focus system to control the, the focusing on the lens, I can also use it to control the aperture. Because the, the cine lenses have got a really nice smooth aperture, I can gently control um, the aperture. So if I'm going, say, from outdoors to indoors, and I need to be able to control the exposure in a really smooth, non-stepping way, having that smooth aperture control, I can just dial that straight with the follow focus, and I can either do that automatically with the the autofocus feature on the gimbal, or I can use the dial uh, to, to change the aperture manually. So again, that's another benefit of having cine lenses with the, the smooth aperture dial. So what we're gonna do, Jack, is um, we're gonna do some bits of you not singing, just because yeah. for the, um, for sort of like the extra, B, let's say B-roll shots, um, I wanna make sure that we've got enough kind of footage. Yeah. Um, just to have sort of extras. Take it down to T2. T2? What, what's that? Well, cine lenses are actually measured in T-stops rather than F-stops. So F-stops are the theoretical amount of light that will go through the lens based on the diameter and focal length. T-stops is the actual amount of light that makes it through. So simply put, F-stops is the measurement of light hitting the front of the lens and T-stops is how much actually makes it through. So there is a difference when measuring T-stops and F-stops, and that's just something that you'll have to sort of get used to when using cine lenses. So this lens is a 28 and it's, it's really nice and wide. So I can really, because this room's quite tight, I can show the full scope of the window and the reflections as well. It looks really, really cool. So earlier the sun was out and we were getting this really nice dappled light through the Acer tree outside, which was scattering the pockets of light all across the room. So we're hoping that that comes back out again later on. I'm just controlling the focus with the follow focus on this gimbal. Because the focus mechanism is really, really smooth, it's just really sort of seamless going from in and out of focus. Cool, so I'm just gonna get your hands if you, I get your rings. That's it. Just keep moving your hands around. That's nice. God, the depth of field in this, even at, at T2, is so nice. Cine lenses don't have any autofocus whatsoever, so you can use them with a follow focus, or you can focus them by hand if you want. If you've manually focused with normal lenses in the past, then you probably found it quite tricky to rack from close focus to infinity if you're doing that kind of transition. So because all of the cine lenses in the Sigma range have 180 degree focus throw, it means it's really easy to get a really nice precision focus, whether you're focusing manually or with a follow focus, it's just really nice and smooth. Okay, so we just finished shooting the first scene with the, the 28 mil, um, and I'm just gonna swap the lens over to the the 20 mil because we're going to go outside and I want to just make that space look even bigger. Um, what I am really liking about the lenses so far is that because the, the the focus gears are exactly in the same place for each of the lenses, it means that swapping over isn't so much of a, of a hassle. I can just pop it on, rebalance the gimbal and away we go. I ended up not using any of that 20 mil uh, footage just because it did end up a little bit too wide for me so 35 I'd say is probably my favorite lens out of the lot just because of the nice depth of field that it gives here I'm actually using the the focus wheel on the front of the gimbal just to control that focus really really nice and smooth 
and then you've also got the option for aperture control as well so you can literally dial it all the way from say t1.5 all the way down to t16 so it's really nice smooth transition I tend to shoot by myself so having an external HDMI monitor with the focus peaking turned on which is the, the green bits that you can see uh, shows me exactly what's in focus at any given time so that works really well in conjunction with the focus wheel. So you're probably wondering about the image quality and what I think of the, the look of the lenses. There's something, something dreamy about them and something that kind of looks really high end and they they're really 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 sharp but they also have got this like soft cinematic look to them as well it's something you kind of have to see with your own eyes to be able to describe it's always really funny when i look back at footage of me recording because it looks like i'm just not saying anything just sort of waving my camera around but it's only really when you get home and look at the results you realize that these lenses are definitely a really quality product so that pretty much wraps up day one of the music video. Um, we've got two more locations to cover. We've got a beach and also a lake environment as well. So yeah, that's day, day one at Ed Shed in London, which was an amazing modern space with loads of beautiful light and really crisp, clean lines. So on the second day of shooting, we headed down to a beach near me um, brought along the whole set again luckily they came in this really nice hard pelly case because yeah it's very rocky dusty sandy and wet so all the things you don't really want to get into uh, expensive cine primes so obviously I'm not going to be splashing them around in the in the sea or rubbing grit into them or anything like that but it's just worth mentioning that they are made from 100% metal and they are both dust and splash resistant as well so really good I probably wouldn't be getting my gimbal anywhere near the water but if they were just mounted directly to my camera which is also dust and splash resistant then I know that I'm not going to worry if it starts to rain and given that this summer has been a bit hit and miss with the weather um, it's probably a good thing so this beach is literally five minutes from my house but as much as I love the sort of gold and sandy sort of mud look I uh, decided to actually change the tones in post-production just to give it more of like a red kind of kind of part Mars part Grand Canyon kind of vibe so that's why the colors are looking a little bit different from the final project here so even though the lenses are probably three times heavier than what I'm used to using I quickly got used to it actually and I found that the weight of them actually helped keep my shots even more stable just because of the centre of gravity and the way that I'm holding them. So I don't think them being heavy is actually a bad thing. If you're shooting video outside you're probably going to be using an ND filter on the front of the lens. You don't see me using one here just because the adapter that I'm using to mount the lenses to my camera actually has uh, an ND filter built in but if you're a fan of using ND filters on the front of your lenses a screw on type then you'll be pleased to know that they are all 82 millimeter filter size so the filter size is standardized at 82 mil it means that you can use the same size ND filter on most of the lenses in the the Sigma lineup and that will probably be a breath of fresh air to you if you are normally shooting on photography lenses and you've got loads of different size ND filters that you want to carry with you and put away and take off and screw on and off um, and then it means you don't need any kind of step up rings or step down rings as well so that's another benefit of them all being of a similar size. And that wraps up day two. For the third and final location we went to St Andrews Lakes just outside of Rochester in Kent which is which has just some beautiful crystal clear blue water that is in the middle of a quarry you just wouldn't expect it to be there and this was going to be all shot on a boat Jack was going to be rowing and I was going to be filming him as he sang so for this scene I used the 24 millimeter lens and what was really interesting because of the long focus throw which meant I could get really accurate focusing being able to rock the focus wheel back and forth as he rode just to try and keep his face in focus as much as I could which is a bit tricky you can see and just about keeping up with the rowing motions uh, that allowed me to, to nail the focus really nice and smoothly. 
So if you want to check out the full Better Days video in 4K, it's available now on my YouTube channel and Better Days is available to stream now on Spotify and Apple Music. So I've been quiet, sitting there silent, sleeping these miles away. I know you feel it when I'm dreaming, it's the only place I want. As I progress throughout my filmmaking journey, it makes me realize how important manual focusing is as a skill to have. A lot of people are shocked when I tell them, um, especially wedding videographers, that I shoot manual focus all the time. Um, I think if you have a mirrorless camera or a DSLR, you're probably gonna be used to shooting in autofocus if your camera has a good autofocus system. So I think, um, thinking forward, if I am sort of aiming high and dreaming big in the future, I wanna be working on some really big commercial shoots. If I was to be hired and turn up at one of those jobs, none of the cameras or any of the equipment they use are gonna be using autofocus. So I think if you are looking at getting into cine lenses, um, manual focus is definitely something that you're going to want to practice. Uh, it's not as hard as it looks, it just takes a bit of hand-eye coordination and you can easily master and do it yourself with a bit of practice. So that would be one of the things if you are looking at cine lenses, just remember that they are all completely manual focus, but it's not that hard to learn. I like to use the analogy a bit like learning to drive a car. We all learn to drive a manual gear. Well, most, of, most people tend to learn to drive in a manual car and then move on to an automatic. So you've mastered that skill set first before you then can move on to things that make your life a little bit easier. So just bear that in mind if you are considering the switch to cine lenses, they're manual focus. So that brings me to my last shoot day with the Sigma Cine Primes and I put together a collaborative fashion shoot for a dress designer called Jemmy Maloof and a jewellery maker based in the UK called Carrie Elizabeth Jewellery. I called on Storm from Storm Makeup and Hair who is an incredible hair and makeup artist and I've worked with her loads of times and she always provides the most incredible results. So for my last day with the lenses I just wanted to put something really simple, elegant and beautiful together just to really show off the quality of the lenses and give the brand something that they could use on their social media profiles. So just a really short commercial style, kind of a bit like a, a perfume ad, um, but for the dresses and the jewelry and just keep it to under a minute, about 30 seconds, just to give them some social content. And it all came together really well, despite the rain, it was literally raining on and off all day and our lovely model Macy, she had a flat tire on the way as well. So it wasn't really off to a good start, but luckily once the hair and makeup was finished, the sun came out and we were blessed with a really amazing sky. So we head off back down to the beach and because the rocks were quite slippery, I didn't really want to risk taking all of the lenses with me again. So I decided to go for the 28. It's kind of the sweet spot between the 24 and the 35. You've still got quite a wide angle with really nice T1.5 uh, aperture, but it's still got a little bit of compression just to give that kind of beauty edge with the depth of field. So I was actually lucky enough to be provided with two dresses and two sets of jewellery, but shortly after we started in classic British fashion, it started to rain. So we finished off what we were shooting and what we captured looked absolutely stunning. So I was more than happy to have a break in the weather just to capture this short clip and yeah, really, really happy with the results. I was made to feel holy Liquid gold runs through my veins I don't understand fully The desire to hear people call my name I've got a city at my fingertips So after trying out the Sigma Cine Primes for a month, here are my five top reasons why you could consider switching to Cine lenses. Number one, consistency and control across the whole range. So I'm talking about the follow focus gears and the filter thread size. So you won't need to take a whole load of different size ND filters and you know that when you're mounting any lens onto your follow focus system that you're not gonna to have to shift everything around. It's always gonna be in the same place. So it makes lens swapping super easy and the colors will match no matter which focal length you choose. 
Number two, and that is the image quality sharpness. And if you love the Sigma Art photo lens look and the quality of the images that you get from those lenses, then you're definitely gonna love switching to Sigma Cine Primes. I just love like the commercial look and how high end everything looks. Um, you can make anything look big budget. So yeah, image quality. Number three is build quality. So these lenses are made from a 100% metal body and they are dust and splash resistant. So I know that they're gonna withstand anything that I throw at them. Number four is the smoothness of the focus and aperture control. So for me using a follow focus, knowing that there's hard stops at the end point of the infinity focus and then the close focus means that it's super easy for me to be able to calibrate my follow focus system. So yeah, being able to slot that straight into my setup with hard stops makes it a breeze to manually focus and it's really, really smooth. Point number five is that they're available in a variety of mount types. At the moment, they're available in PL, EF, and E mount. And I know that moving forward, if I ever was to switch camera brands in future, that there would be a mount that would fit my camera. So I think as an investment, you know that you can have these lenses for a long, long time. Oh, and did I mention that the lettering on the side of the lenses glows in the dark? There are in fact 10 different focal lengths available in Sigma's Cine Prime range. That starts from a really wide 14 millimeter all the way to 135 millimeter and they are all full frame and there is also some super 35 and full frame high speed zooms available too. So what do you think? Are Cine lenses gonna be the next step in the evolution of your filmmaking journey? I think for me personally, they are 100% gonna be my next purchase. And despite the fact that they are a little bit pricier than traditional lenses, you can always have the option of hiring them before you commit to buying them. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how I'm gonna fit Cine lenses into my workflow. I definitely think they're gonna be helping me improve my filmmaking as I move forward just for all of the reasons that I've spoken about today. And I just love the consistency and the image quality of these lenses. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what I create with them in the future. If you're interested in checking out more of my work, the best place to follow me would be on Instagram at Russell Kent Nichols. I'm always sharing behind the scenes and tips on my Instagram stories. Uh, generally when I post as well, I always include which lens I've used, which camera I've used. Um, so yeah, feel free to go and check me out on there. And I just wanna say a big thank you to Sigma for lending me the Cine Primes for the last month. They have been a very interesting experience and I'm really grateful that I had the opportunity to try them out. So thank you so much again for joining me on this Wex Masterclass and I hope to see you in the next one. Big city light, big city dreams, think large, go hard, shine light for the ones in the dark, stay true to yourself and go big from the heart.